to share my screen here and uh, happy new year everyone or at least a uh, happy atd new year our chapter board of directors has done a good job of taking january to develop plans for this year and here we are implementing those plans and not incidentally if there's anything you would like the chapter to be doing differently uh please join the board of directors and uh, be the change you'd like to see the chapter website makes applying very easy toward that end uh, Kevin Jorgensen and I are reinvigorating the chapter's technology SIG special interest group. For this workshop, we will continue with a guest presenter. Uh, this month, we are very fortunate to have Jody Sansone, who is at the top of the leaderboard currently of Articulate's e-learning challenges. Uh, she will take over the latter part of this workshop to peek behind the curtain of a lesson on most everyone's favorite challenge, working with clients in SMEs along with translating the materials they may provide into e-learning while staying true to the original content. New this year, we'll be taking advantage of a resource that Articulate makes available, which are the aforementioned e-learning challenges. We will be downloading and deconstructing some of the entries. Uh, we are starting uh, with uh, animations and accordions. Uh, the words charts and graphs are likely to bring two responses to uh, many IDs. One is boring and two is how to make this less boring. Animation is an approach to that that, uh, that second issue. Let me see if I can uh, bring up an example here. Go, there we go. Uh, this is a, uh, an example sent into an e-learning challenge by Alison Lamont, who's a staff member at Articulate. Best use of this may be as a bill series, so the columns appear as they're in their animated fashion as the supporting text or voiceover refers to them. Uh, let's take a look under the hood here. You can see each of the bars here is simply an animation, a fly-in animation, and... Look what happens if we go down here and we eliminate rectangle 15. Where did it go? And take a look at this again, preview this slide. You'll see that these fly-ins start all the way at the bottom of the screen, which is not uh, exactly what we want. So the training point here is uh, if you want a fly-in to begin in the middle of the uh, screen, or somewhere in the frame, put the a white rectangle to cover up the area where you don't want to see the uh, fly in. You can see in the uh, timeline here, the rectangles are staggered here, which could be uh, coordinated with, or they, they could be triggered with the audio or else they could be on separate slides uh, whatever would uh, work best there uh, this is uh, now a kind of the horizontal version of the same thing we'll take a look at that and we'll see them doing the same thing basically the same approach except now i think we are doing a wipe here instead of a animation no this is still a fly-in but in this case the fly-in is coming from the left rather than the bottom here is a uh, line graph here this is uh, using uh, this uses the wipe here because it's not flying in it's uh, static there and then uh, we show that it is an option coming in uh, left to right and this is another where all familiar with pie charts. Let's take a look at that. And here we go round and round. I don't particularly like that too much. And I think it would be better if uh, these were a little less flashy. You can uh, certainly go in and uh, change the animation to a, from a spin to a, uh, I think like a, Wipe would be a little bit nicer. Let's give that a try.
There we go. I, I think that that's a little bit nicer. Uh, any conversation on uh, this? Any uh, questions about how it works or uh, any suggestions on how it could be effectively used? Well, I, I would say one thing too, like sometimes the simplest thing is the thing you use. So when, if you have the, when you first showed that, the, those bars flying in and you know, they're going to fly in across the whole slide, mm -hmm. hiding them behind a white, a white curtain or a veil is sometimes just the simplest thing to do. Cause you know, I'm sure that there's a, you know, one great thing about storyline, there's always 10 ways to do it, but that's like a nice, simple, I'm just going to hide it. No one will know. Oh, you'll know, but the people who are taking the course won't know. So that's actually a, a good, good trick. So only you'll know. Now let's move along to, this is, uh, as I said earlier, uh, accordions. Um, and this is by uh, Monsi, who, like many talented mm -hmm. creatives, goes by a single name. <laughs> let's take a uh, look at that. So as accordions are advertised to do, as you click uh, the different buttons here, it shows different information here. Notice that these are scrolling panels here. So you can put as much text in here as necessary. And the... Uh, learner can see the detail here while everything remains in context. Taking a quick look at that, uh, this is the uh, same idea just on the different side of the page. Taking a look under the hood, we can see that this is all done in layers here. In just a moment, we're going to do a, a, a click along and you can see how this is done with different slides. Each layer here has the uh, different information on it. And then the uh, triggers up here uh, sh take you to the uh, different, oops, the uh, different layers. So let's, uh, are there any questions about this? And we will do a quick uh, click along to see how it all works. If you're logged into storyline and ready to take it for a test drive go up to the uh, file menu here click new and we will start something here now i'm going to do something with uh, three three buttons here let's do something on uh, pets so we need our, need our buttons first go to insert go over here to where are the buttons button button Here's a nice button here. We'll put that button in there, call that a dog. Let's uh, make two copies of that, control C, point. That's two copies of that. We'll move that guy over there, that guy over there. Space them out a little bit. Okay. Some people like dogs. Some people like cats. Cat, and let's uh, go over to this one. And some people like to snuggle up with a nice warm snake. Those snakes don't have E's on them, do they? That was in Wordle today. S-N-A-T-E. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> uh, okay, so now, as I said, we're going to do this with uh, slides rather than uh, layers like Muncy did. So what we need is... Uh, Go to home here and let's click new slide for dog, cat, snake. So we will name these. Dog. Cat and let's go to snake. And let's, uh, let's, uh, best practice is to uh, name these buttons as well so we'll call this one button dog call this one button cat and we certainly can't forget the snake regardless of how it's spelled mm -hmm. okay now next uh, step is to uh, we want our navigation to work here. So let's uh, click dog, insert a trigger, and we want, we want the dialog box to be on the screen so we can see it. So jump to slide 
dog when the user clicks the button for dob. Well, that should be dog, but anyway, <laughs> however it's spelled. Okay, so now let's uh, copy that twice, copy that trigger twice, go up, copy, boink, boink, that's two times. So let's uh, change this, uh, jump to slide cat when the user clicks cat. All right, and then we'll do a the third one. Click jump to snake when the user clicks button for snake. There we go. Okay, this is good. Let's select all three of them and then move them to all three of these slides. One, two, and let's pull that out a little bit more so I can see what's lurking, and then snakes. All right. Now, and what's good is like all your triggers came with the shapes. So all the, each slide's got this, all the same triggers on it. So right, we're going right. to do I, the same thing. I think that's a, a, a good practice if you're going to mm -hmm. have the same navigation on everything, just do mm -hmm. it once and then copy mm -hmm. and paste to go along. I'm all for yeah. efficiency. I'm a lazy person, so I don't like mm -hmm. to work too hard. Efficient, efficient. Efficient, efficient, mm -hmm. efficient person. Okay, let's uh, put some text in here. We'll click on insert here. Here we go with a text box, and we'll just put that in, and we'll say dogs are... Dogs are, and then we're going to move this over to the corner here, kind of get it out of the way. And then what we're going to do is insert one of these scrolling panel things. So we can put lots and lots of text in there. So go back to the insert menu, go over all the way down here on the right, scrolling panel. Let's put a big old panel in here. Yeah, this is the uh, trick to scrolling panels. You have to create the panel first and then put the text inside the panel. And now we need to add a whole bunch of text. I'm going to cheat here and bring up some Greeking that I recorded ahead of time. So we'll just select a whole bunch of that and then go back in here and make sure that we're in the text box rather than the scrolling thing. And then put that in there and let's uh, let me First, I'll pull this text box out a little bit wider and down where I side it. Okay. Now, make sure we are selecting the scrolling panel rather than the, just the text. Copy that. And let's go back to the other two slides. That's, uh, what are we at now? Cats. Mm-hmm. So we'll say cats are cats are, and let's go over to oh we were working in uh, snakes the whole time I didn't realize that okay so that's ready and all we have to do is go back to the original one we were working on which should have said snakes are so let's see what we have here we'll go to preview. And here is our landing slide. Click dog. There's everything you needed to know about dogs. And there's cats. And there's snakes. Regardless of how they're spelled, that's a special species of snake mm -hmm. there. Spell, spell that way. Uh, any questions about uh, how that works? Any suggestions on how it could be uh, used to good advantage? Of course, yeah, you can do a lot of uh, cleaning this up to make it look a little nicer and work with uh, states here so that these uh, it's obvious which of these is being seen at any one time. Okay, well, with that, uh, let me uh, turn it over to Jody. To, oh, okay. Uh, I will stop sharing my screen. Okay. And, uh, Great. And I've been watching, uh, nobody else joined us. And um, I 
did find out something new about Zoom is that if you post something before people join, they can't see it. So you have to post it when everybody's there. Uh, so uh, thank okay. you for that tip. So, okay. I'm going to show you something too. I don't know um, about the lorem ipsum thing. I don't know if you guys know this uh, little um, trick, but do you guys know how to do uh, lorem dummy copy fill if you need to do it? Have you ever done that or? Uh, no, would... is that built into? Yeah, yeah, I'll show you how to do it. Oh, so yeah. I'm just going to take a blank slide here before we get into this because I was, yeah. and by the way, if you love cats and dogs, there's cat <laughs> ipsum and dog ipsum that I use a lot. So, Ooh, but wow. you can have some fun. So let me, um, I'll this insert a new, a new slide and show you how to do that. So, okay. and I, I give you credit. It's hard to like talk and uh, do a new, a new, um, to do a new slide. So, okay. So what you can do is um, you insert, you go up here to your, your uh, home base up here, and we're going to insert a text box. Okay. Go home, insert have to, text have box. To, have to actually click insert. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Now we're going to hit the text box. We're going to create a text box. And I learned this in my first uh, storyline class I ever took. You type in lorem, uh -huh. a paren, and how many lines of text you want. Oh, my and, and then hit, and then you hit enter. Oh, equals lorem. Sorry. Equals lorem. Oh, Oops. sorry. It didn't work here. Let me do it again. They equals lifted lorem. that from uh, Microsoft Word. Yeah, yeah. That, that so, works in Word as well. Yeah. So I think like you just got to get, there you go. That is wonderful. Yeah, so it's a nice, easy thing to do, and um, just equal lorem, and then how many lines you want, and then you have it. So, okay. how do you do dog? <laughs> oh, that one! That one you got to go to the app, and it's uh, dog ipsum and uh, cat ipsum, and they have a Samuel L. Jackson ipsum. And the one that I use, like when I'm doing demos, is depending on what client. Like if it's a, if it's like a technology or like a, I do a lot of compliance. There's a compliance ipsum that's kind of fun, you know, rather than this lorem ipsum, mm -hmm. whatever. It just makes it a little bit more fun. Uh, the cat ipsum is a lot of fun. There's a lot of hairball references in it. So. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, so equal lorem paren number paren, and you can fill up all your, all your space. So excellent. That was worth okay. my hour just to learn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What else you got? Okay, so let me get, I'm going to, um, okay, so let me show my preview here. Well, thanks for inviting me. So that was really great. When John contacted me, I was like, oh, this will be fun. I would love to do this. So thank you. Let me generate my preview, and then I'll give a little background of what I'm going to show and what was on my mind. You guys all see my home slide here? Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, Looks great. good. Yeah, there so okay so when john invited me and i said okay well what would you like me to cover he goes oh i don't know whatever whatever you're thinking about and i was in the middle of kicking off a new project so it's been on my mind so i thought okay terrific then uh let me start with that so let me tell you a little bit of background about my project and then we're going to show you i'll show you some interaction options uh, that i developed and then we'll you guys can tell me which one you want to see behind the curtain and I really appreciate that I was doing this today because I found some, um, I created some things just to play around to see what they would look like. And I, I found a glitch and this uh, time with you is keeping me from embarrassing myself with my client next week because <laughs> I found some things that weren't working right. So that was great. So we'll be sure to be extra critical then. Yeah, yeah, really. So. Well, here's a little bit about my company, uh, the client that I just started working with. And I don't know these folks at all. It's the first time, um, but they're a holding company in fashion retailing. And I'm sure some of us are wearing some of their, their clothes. Or if you're wearing something leather, you probably have something from this company. And, you know, like a lot of companies right now, everybody in the department's new. You know, anybody in the L&D or in talent or in recruiting, you know, everybody's done, you know, musical chairs and no one's been there more than a month that I can tell. So it's kind of, you know, you're really starting from, they're starting from scratch and you're starting from scratch with them. And their big challenge is they're trying to create some consistency and discipline in their people management processes. So, and this is what they've asked me to work on. And I'm working on this with my business partner, Jill. They've asked me to create a companion e-learning module that is supporting an in-person training session. 
So my business partner, Jill, she's working on the session and then I'm creating all the interactive materials that support it. So it's kind of good. You know, it's good to see people doing kind of blended stuff and the, the, the materials will support their performance management process. And what they're really trying to do is build consistency in how their managers, employees manage feedback, you know, so giving feedback and receiving it. So it's kind, kind of like a fun, fun topic. And one of my, what they did was they gave me some materials from a previous effort. I looked at the materials that had the date of 2012 on it. So some concepts, you know, survive the test of time. And this is one of those topics, I think. So this is what the materials looked like. It was an old um, training manual and it had some, you know, models in it, like, uh, you know, how to conduct a coaching conversation, some situational, situational leadership. And then this is kind of the crux of the um, session here. So it's um, engaging people and building their skills and how to have a really good coaching and feedback conversation. And maybe you recognize this model. This is like a development dimensions, international model, like how to have a good conversation. So what I did for the demo today was I took this slide and I said, okay, like if I have to make this interactive, you know, what would I do with it? And how would I, how would I bring it to life in their, you know, in their, um, in their materials. And this, by the way, is a little hover effect if you were wondering what I was doing there. So it's a little, every time you hover on that, that little thing pops up. So since John did animation, entrance animations, that's an entrance animation. Okay. So the first thing I do, and you guys tell me um, before I ever start with anybody, and John and I were talking about, I think we, when we were first met that with somebody new, I never know what they like. Um, I get their pile of materials. I get a book, of their brand book with their colors and their fonts, but I don't know what they're going to like. And, you know, every, the worst thing for me is to do a course and then find out six months down, oh, the boss doesn't like square buttons. He wants rounded corner buttons and you have to do everything <laughs> over. So I try and head it off at the past and get their get them comfortable with what they're seeing. So I always set up like a little standards board. These are, you know, these are all their, their colors, these blues, you can tell it's probably kind of like a conservative company with all these colors. This is, they've got like a pretty standard font. And I said, okay, buttons will look like this. And then my other thing is, uh, you know, we're going to use a lot of icons and let's give them some example of what kind of icons they'll be seeing. Because again, you don't want five months to go by and hear the boss hates the icons. They look too fat, you know? So, <laughs> so you try and, you know, head it off as much as possible. Do you go any further and do some example slides? Yep. And that that's part of the demo. The, the demo okay. I have for today is what I show them to say, like, what do you feel like? How do you like this? So I did though. I want to ask, uh, do all of you uh, know how to set up styles in your slides and um, uh, color styles and font styles? Are you aware of that? Or do you want me to show you that? Or I see one nod like, yes, you are. And anybody else want to see that? Or I see one thumbs up here. Yeah, uh, that is a fairly new feature. I think that was only a couple of versions ago that they added um, the styles for the. Uh, yeah, let me find it and text. I'll pull it up. It'll just take yeah, a second. Yeah, let me close would... the preview. And I I'll tell you this. Would like to see your take on it. Yeah, and this is one of those things that um, I didn't always do first, but now I do it before I even start because it helps me think about how I'm going to frame this course. So it's up here in the uh, design panel up here. Okay, so if we click on that, and then you get all these built-in styles, but it's right up here: colors and fonts. And if um, let me go back to this. Um, this slide because we can see like what happens. So up here, if you bring it down, it gives you all these, some of, most of these are built in, but it'll give you different color, color palettes for your slides. And once you set these up, I mean, it makes it so much easier when you're changing things. So this is the one um, that I'm using for this project, but um, let me, let me pull one up and I'll show you like, uh, if you haven't seen it, I'll just show you quickly. If you hit create a new theme color. Let's say your, your organization or your client has special colors. 
you just click on that and you can decide, you know, what you want the background to be, what you want, you know, what you want all your buttons to look like. And um, it just makes your life easier to have this all set up uh, ahead of time. Um, I'll get, I'll get out of this one. Yeah. And then how it, how it manifests itself in your project is like, let's say you want to click and change an item and you go to the format panel up here. When you format now, you're going to get all the colors that you set up, right? If you don't do that, um, you're always going to get the, if you don't set it up, you're always going to get these default colors and then you're changing every single thing one at a time. So it's just, just something to think about. Um, oh, such a time saver. Yeah, it really, I never did it until I started doing it. And now I don't even start a project without, without setting it up. So it does where, save where, time. Where do those other colors come from? I see all the way on the right, the uh, third from the end and the second from the end are not in your palette. Um, you know, they might be, um, it's this one. Yeah, that's in my palette, that one. Uh, the one to the right of that uh, is a more more of a teal color, and then to the right of that is a very light green color. No, up in the uh, oh, up here. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. These are all these are like the base colors here, mm -hmm. and then what happens is underneath they give you shades. I don't right. know if I'm following you. Did, did am I misunderstanding? Uh, no, the one not the one on the end, but the second and third ones from the end. Uh, no, there? no, that, 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 that oh. looks like, like a different color from what yeah. you have in your palette. Oh, I got it. Yeah. And what happened here was um, they don't use that color, mm -hmm. but the, uh, in the uh, design panel, it's got like eight different colors you can use. Oh. So I just had to fill it in with something. That is in the style. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. There it is up there. So yeah. like these first ones up here are, are in their guide. There and then, go. and then some, you know, you never know, you might want like to put like a little burst of color somewhere in, in there. So I see, I, I misunderstood. So, but yeah, and then you can make your own, like I've been using this one for some demos. This is the Pantone color of the year demo that I've been playing with, but anyway. Okay. So let me get back to this demo, but I wish I had done that sooner in my development life because and, and by the time I started doing it was like, why? Where have you been all my life? <laughs> there are also styles for text that you should point yeah. out. That, that's yeah. uh, new. That's uh, that's a big deal. Again, another lift yeah. from uh, Microsoft Word, but that will really yeah. make your life. Yeah, and this will take like all your headers and all your body copy and just change it throughout your course, yeah. which you got to be careful too, because it, sometimes it does weird wonky things. So um, this is a really terrible this custom one, this Oswald light, Oswald and Lado light. That was, I was trying to find one that was terrible for legibility. And that was for another example, but this is what my client has. They like this Avenir one. So. All right. Okay. And, and that there are also text styles. That, yeah. That, that that's, that's what I was referring to. Uh, yeah. sh sh show that to our folks here for a yeah. moment. That's, that uh, is uh, to to the left a little bit uh, under where it says normal. There we yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. And you can set up your, um, you know, the hierarchy for your all of your all of your slides here, kind of like in PowerPoint, I guess. So yeah, exactly. PowerPoint yeah. and uh, Word does that as well. Plus, at the bottom, you can create custom. You can create as many yeah. styles as you want. Yep. So Hours okay. All right. So let me get to the project here. So let me go back here. Okay. So, and I just put this menu up here for us. So I was, okay. Yeah. So let me just remind you, this is what I'm trying to, what is, this is what I'm trying to translate for today is like how to bring this thing to life from 2012 before there was e-learning, right? Oh, there might've been some e-learning back then. I'm only aware of it from 2016. That's when I started. So, okay, let me get all my, all these panels out of the way here. I think I'm going to minimize this panel so I can see what I'm doing here. So, okay. Yeah. So this was my first stab at this feedback conversation model. And again, like, I don't know what these folks are going to like, but I thought, okay, what if I traded it like a little bit of a dashboard? And so what I did here, and I'll show you a couple and then we'll go behind the hood, but I just want to show you like what I'm playing around with. So 
This one is like a little simple click and reveal. So you click on it and then, um, you know, you get to read about what each of the steps in this conversation model are. And I, I don't, you know, I sort of was thinking about this. I'm going to replay this slide again. I know for me, what, all that's going on here is I'm clicking, a layer's coming up, and then the, the meat of the aspect of the model is showing up. And I always try and give people like a little bit of an idea ahead of time before they click, they know what they're getting into. So that's why I kind of put things in gray. So they know that there's something I hate seeing like a blank that there's nothing there. So that is just something I try to like give them an idea that they should be clicking. And I haven't thought through like how to give the instructions yet, but here I just want to get an idea from this client. Do they like this kind of dashboard look or how do they feel about that? This, this wasn't, this probably wouldn't be, I don't feel like this gives a, an idea of the flow and that this is a continuous process that should go on. So this probably wouldn't be my, my favorite. So um, let me show you another one. So this one, I just took kind of like something that does look like a cycle and it's the same idea I'm clicking. And now the description of each of the, each of the steps comes up and like John had shown these little, you know, these little descriptors are just flying in when I'm clicking on this. So again, I'll show you the backdrop there, but this one I kind of like better because it looks like a continuous cycle. I probably, if I were going to do this one, I'd probably start one right here instead of over at 11 o'clock, but, but you, you know, you get the idea. Um, this is another one. Now, what I was trying to do here was just give it some more personality. So I got these little profiles. I wanted to bring some people into it, but I really didn't know how to bring people I didn't want to like have these geeky little stick people in it. So I thought, well, maybe like this little profile might work. So it suggests people in a conversation, but they look kind of robotic. Um, but um, this is how this one works. When you click each of the steps, then the little, the little descriptor flies in. Yeah, that's nice. I'm kind of liking that one. It's clean. Um, this is probably the copy is probably too small for people who, you know, have, you know, are hard to read, but maybe getting there. And then here's the last one. And I always monkey like this. Like it's some people knit and crochet when they're <laughs> to relax. Like I make, you know, I make little storyline slides. So this is the one I have a feeling that they might like something like this. So this one's a little completely different. So I've got this little cycle and I've got, um, as you click on each one, then the copy comes up. Okay. So if I were going to show, I would probably show maybe two of these to my client. I would probably show these last two, I think are the ones that are, I think have are more interesting and that I could see using. Um, but this one's pretty good too. It shows a cycle and, and maybe these graphics aren't right, but I'm still, still playing around with it. So so let me ask you, I've got a bunch of these here. Which one would you like to go behind the scenes and, and tear apart? Yeah, that last one looked interesting. I like the way that the th things pop up as you hover over them. How does that okay. work? Okay. Okay. Well, the first thing I would like to say is that I used John's little trick here um, of hiding something that wasn't... Uh, that I didn't want to show on the slide because I couldn't figure out how to make a nice round crescent <laughs> in my, in my uh, shape skills. So, you know, I wanted it to look nice and clean on the bottom. So I just stuck like a little, uh, a little rectangle over this here. So that's the first thing I did. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I was empathizing there when I saw John, like, you know, putting a, a veil on something. So, all right. So this one's pretty simple. Let me show you what this is. So let me get my, timeline panel up here. So the foundation of the slide, I'm sorry, let me get, I'm going to have to like uh, move the, I'm going to, I'm going to close the participant panel. So I don't see you all right now. So if, okay. if you, you got to, you got to tell me if you want me to stop, I can't see any thumbs up or thumbs down. So, okay. So the base of this slide is, um, are these things that I'm calling the tags, right? So there's five tags. I don't know why I call them that, but they're arc, they're arc, they're arcs, I guess. So, so the first one is the one for open, the one for clarify, 
one for develop, agree and close. And each of these, um, it's just art that I did in Adobe Illustrator and each of them has a normal state, which is the first, this is the first thing that shows, a hover state, which kind of makes it more prominent when you um, put your cursor over it. And then a state that says I visited already. And these, uh, this final visited state for all of the um, arcs is the, in the color palette that I showed you. So here's the agree one, right? So, so that was the first thing I did. I sort of set up this, you know, this uh, structure. Okay. And actually you'll see in here, I don't have any layers on here at all, right? I did everything on this slide in um, states on the, on the base slide. So when I'm clicking, nothing's coming from another layer. So, yeah. so here's my foundation, this little crescent with the arc going over it. Um, and each, then I, each arc is a separate piece of it's artwork, a separate piece right? of art. Yeah. And so, you, you did that outside of storyline. I did it in um, Ado uh, Adobe Illustrator. Okay. And you could do it in PowerPoint. You could do it in shapes here in um, you could create your own shapes here in storyline. If you like, the reason I did it this way is I have a, a subscription to Adobe Illustrator and I saw this art mm -hmm. and all I did was take it apart. I didn't create it myself. So I said, okay, I just changed the color and I liked, um, I'm not personally, I'm not very good at lining things up. And so if I see a piece of illustration that I think works for me that I can use, then I just bend it to my will and um, treat it just like any other picture. But you could have probably done something like this and you could have used all circles you know, but I was kind of looking for something that was kind of stylized that had th th this effect. So, okay. So, so the first thing I did was I just put all these things in place. Right. And I established that I really wanted there to be three states. So when it, the slide comes up, it's kind of grayed out. When you hover, you know that you're hovering over it. And after you've clicked on it, you know, you visited it. Okay. So then the next thing I did is like, okay, now I got to get this copy in here, right? So how do I want that to show up? So for each of these, um, that's the tag. I have text for each of these steps. Where's my text boxes? Here's the text, right? So here's the first one and all through one through five. And what I did on here is, I don't know if um, this is something that you've tried, but I've set this up so that when the timeline starts on this slide, this is hidden. So if you're using states a lot, you can say the initial state, you can make it normal. Normal would be you could see it and hidden means you can't see it. So I have to do something to convert that hidden text here. I'll, I'll let me preview it again. Now that you know what's behind the curtain. So so here's the base, right? This is all the, uh, the normal state kind of uh, grayed out. There's the hover state. And then behind here is all this copy, but I need to trigger it so that we'll, it'll know to show it to, you know, to show itself. So for each of these, every time, um, so I, the way I set up, so when you click open, you're going to change the state of the text to normal. So you're going to turn this from hidden to normal when you click number one. And now it's just wash, rinse, and repeat. When I click number two, it's going to, it's going to make that one pop up. When I, same thing now, when I click number three, this one's going to pop up. So it's a, it's a pretty simple uh, interaction. It's just stuff that's on the slide, and then you're just triggering it to show up. So so I assume once it is, once it appears, it never goes away. Yeah. And it does it nice. And it doesn't matter what order you uh, click it in. Right. So it'll always be, um, let me re replay it again. So it won't, it doesn't matter. Like, and um, this is an, well, actually I could show you like on one of the other slides, like why this is a better solution for what I did. So if they want to go to agree first, you know, cause there's always somebody 
usually somebody in legal who's clicking around and going, I clicked it out of order and it didn't work. All right. So, and but how, this one, how does the learner know what to do? They, oh, I didn't, I didn't write in instructions yet. Okay. So, yeah. So there needs to be an instruction, like click on the, click on the, uh, whatever. So I was just trying to see if I could get it to work and I'd like it, but there, yeah, there definitely has to be some kind of instruction. Um, and I know there's a lot of, a lot of, you know, conversation about what good instructions are and how you tell people what to do. So, but I wanted to show you one of the things I tell you, like I embar I would have embarrassed myself if I had shown it. Um, this cycle one, which I like the setup, instead of using individual pieces of art, yeah, I'm going to show you like the problem with this one, and then I'll show you why it was a problem. So I was glad I, I knew it, but then I forgot it. And when I did it, I'm, oh, I totally forgot. That's how this one works. So, so this one, so I showed it before, like if you click it in order, it works perfectly. You click open and that'll come up. However, on this one, if you go out of order, like it wrecks the colors on the, on the page, right? So that was dumb. So that would be sure I'd be getting calls about somebody. That's why you need to have people look at your, your files. And how I did this one differently, and so I would probably recommend not to do this. Um, I used hotspots to um, trigger a change if are you if you folks use hotspots before they're kind of a nifty thing but not not in this case <laughs> so so on this one i had my base um my base visual was a cycle that went you know had different states go to number one number two number three number four number five and i was using i don't know what and what possessed me to use a hotspot i guess i was in a hotspot mood that day and when you click on this hotspot or any of them, you change the change the shade of that cycle, and then you pull up. Um, if you hit hotspot one, then copy one will come up. But you saw what happened when I didn't do them in order. And this is a pretty simple slide too. Everything's on this slide. There's no layers here. Um, but it really is. Uh, I'd have to really sit down and think about what um, if I wanted this to work. I'd probably have to execute it a different way and not with the hotspots because, or I'd have to really like sit and think about how do I keep, how do I control when people click on it and how do I make sure that they go to one first and two? Cause if, if I don't, then it really wrecks everything. So that, that was kind of a dumb slide, right? It doesn't really work. So thank you everybody for inviting me because you saved me from embarrassing myself on this. Well, would that be an argument for a, if the instructions say click them in order for a little nag message to pop up saying uh, click, have to be clicked in order? Yeah. What I think the, the issue with the hotspots, um, what I would probably do is I probably would get rid of these hotspots because the issue with hotspots is you can't really control them. Like once they're on your slide, they're on there and you can't change the state of them. You can't hide them. Um, you can't hide them until you're ready to use them. So I, it'd, it'd probably be a better, a better solution. They're kind of a nifty thing, but I probably make it like maybe a button that would pop up. So like put a, let's see, like we would do something like this. So you'd probably do, well, you know, I could probably do it with a shape, you know, I could make the shape. I know like, a, let's insert a shape, but we could put like a transparent shape on here instead of a hot spot. With a, with a shape, what you can do is you can make it go, you can hide it at first if you don't want it, you, you don't want it to be seen. So now it's only going to, it'll be hidden until I tell it not to hide. And what you could do then is you could put different shapes here. So I click one and then the, another shape would open up and you'd have to do it in sequence. That just seemed like a lot of work though. So there's definitely a way to, to, um, make it so you don't have the problem that I just created with this rather not very efficient <laughs> solution for this. So, however, on this one though, I mean, I use the same kind of, um, if you like hotspots, if there's nothing wrong with hotspots, but this one, I didn't have that problem because on this one, it doesn't really matter what order you press them in. 
nothing's happening to the visual. It's just things are flying in. So the hotspot was a good, you know, a better solution here. Um, but, it, you know, nothing is changing that shows that they have to be in order. So sometimes I wonder uh, what is the advantage of a hotspot at all? Because you can do so many things with just about any object that you create. Yeah, you know, um, that's a good question. That's why I, as I was playing around with this for tonight, I, I was thinking in my head, I'm going, what was I thinking? You know, <laughs> um, yeah, I think really my part of it was I didn't want to recreate a lot of art and the hotspots like a really quick, like uh, All right. insert it and it's instantly, it's instantly going to do something for you. So I know some people use hotspots um, like sometimes for a game, like if you're doing like a hunting game or something, let's see, we remember that one's under there and like, you know, um, it'll be under here somewhere. Oh, I didn't actually have it do anything, but yeah, it's just um, sometimes um, where I might use a hot spot like this is if you want to cover something up mm -hmm. so you can uh, hide it and it'll still be on the screen. And, but it's, it actually wasn't a good solution for, it's not a great solution for what I was trying to do. So yeah, the invisibility is nice, but as you pointed yeah. out, you can make any object invisible. Yeah. Yeah. It's got less flexibility, but it's fast. So fast but anyway, I think like um, this one would work and I'll probably, I, I think what also, what I'll probably do is before I show it to them, I'm going to figure out like how to make this one work because I like the, um, the I think they might like a cycle graph, but, but um, I, sh I should find a better way to do this. So anyway. Yeah. Well, since it is a cycle, it kind of, yeah. It's almost obvious that that it needs to have a circle in there. To yeah, show and something continuous and right. yeah. So maybe like I'll work on this and uh, when I get it done, I'll send you the finished one that I realized because like it wasn't until today I was looking and practicing, going like, oh my gosh, that's not going to work. So <laughs> I want to see it after the client tears it up. Yeah. So, which they will, which they will. So, but this, this is part of my process to kind of help give people, um, you know, to feel them out because I have never worked with them. And, um, you know, before I, uh, worked in here, I'll stop sharing and let, unless you want to see something else. Um, before I worked in, uh, uh, learning and development and instructional design, I worked in advertising and marketing. So I was very, um, I was very used to being a client and have creative showing me five options for how to do something. So that's just my orientation is to play and treat them the way I like to be treated. And I always, I'm glad I was a client because I try and, um, I tried to be a good client. And then, so now I try and remember like, what did I like when the creative director would come with something, you know, how do I, and how do I like take it when they hate it, you know, so. And, and then how do I inc incorporate their thoughts so they feel like, you know, they want to own it too. And, and uh, yeah. well, uh, we're down mm -hmm. to the last uh, four, yeah. uh, three or four minutes yeah. here. Uh, is there anything you wanted to say to, uh, or are there any questions from our participants here? Unmute yourself and ask yeah. away if you. And I'm going to put that, this. I'll put my file back in here, even though, you know, it's like uh, a work in progress. I'll, I'll, yeah. maybe I'll find a way to get it in a better shape by next week. <laughs> Let me ask you uh, real quickly here. Uh, any tips on uh, working with your client and your SMEs? How do you present this to them? Uh, do you, um, what, pretty, what kind of buildup, what kind of uh, setup? Well, not too different than I just did it with all of you. Like I'll, you know, I'll just say, look, you know, this is just a kind of a level setting um, meeting. I have something too. I think, um, I, uh, John, like, and I'm happy to like provide that too, is like a, a kickoff guide. That's like a conversation guide, mm -hmm. but pretty much it's like, okay, let's just, this is just kind of like a, a work session. Here's what we think our objectives are. Here's what you've given me. Here are my assumptions I'm making about, um, what you think looks good, how it could work. Let me show you some things just to, get a temperature and just see like what they gravitate toward what they hate more. So is like, if you hate it, then I won't bother doing it. So that's, um, 
valuable. And I, what I have noticed too is sometimes um, you have a client, they've never worked on anything like this before. They have no idea. Really? And so if you show them things, they're like, wow, you can do that. I mean, we could do a game and you that you can click that or you can do a 360, you know, they're, they get really into it and it really helps them think about their material. Um, you know, they get excited and, and uh, by the, the first project, they're, pretty happy. And then by the second project, they start being more creative, you know, cause they're more invested and they, they have a feel now for what you can do. And so, but yeah, just to have a conversation with them and kind of to do that feedback model, <laughs> open it, discuss, clarify, agree and close. <laughs> well, uh, toward that end, do you then mm -hmm. do somewhat of a, a meeting report to uh, get on paper? You agreed to this. You didn't like that. You I want you have these other expectations. Um, sometimes just depends, you know, if they're, you know, like some companies, like, you know, if you're working like a big company that's used to like a lot of documentation, yes. But some of them are, sometimes it's like, here, I'll leave you with this link, go play with it and give me comments. If you use Articulate 360, you know, and they write things, you know, that's a great way to, to so see helpful. like what they're, you know, of what they have. Um, so okay well uh, okay thank you thank you very much jody we are honored Thanks. i to, had fun uh, by the way if any of you tear apart files um monsi's files those are the ones i learned on her files are great and um she's amazing and i still i that accordion that he showed i was telling john oh my god i downloaded that one like a long time ago and learned how to do it because her files are are fantastic and she's so creative and she's got like a really good art you know creative look and feel so yeah, she's she like knows i learned a lot from doing. her yeah and I, I put my email back in there if, if uh you know you get stuck on something or you know just just email me the other thing i would say if you can in the articulate community those seminars they do every week or the quick tips like i'm always in there and um okay. i do them even in the beginner ones i go because there's always new features that they add. And I just learned about a Zoom feature the other day. Oh, John was telling me he uses it all the time. I didn't even know it existed. And I was like, whoa, how could I have had that in my face for six years and didn't even know it was in there? So, but yeah, feel, feel free to re reach out. I'm always on the computer, always doing a, something okay. for the challenges. So. And what you just said is a, a perfect example yeah. of a special interest group. It's, yeah. Uh, people who uh, at least... Uh, uh, know a little bit about what they're doing, uh, talking about uh, their tips and tricks and best practices. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, with uh, that, I'm going to end the recording here. Well, thank you, everybody. Yeah, I appreciate thank, it. That was fun. Uh, thank, uh, thank you again, Jody, yeah. for sure. joining us. And Okay, and next week is uh, e-learning challenge number 361. What it'll be. <laughs> okay, Get in there. All all welcome to uh, join with that challenge. Okay. okay. Good, Good night. night. Thank you so much. Thank you.